It's a click heat map, mouse heat map, user journeys. This is the most interesting for me, for example. So it combines all the different people's data and behaviors what we did on that page. Hey, what is up? Welcome back Design Squad. And today I want to share with you something new, a tool which I've kind of delayed and, and I took my time to approach and review and have like a first stab. The best bit about this tool is that it's fully open source. A few fellas just decided why not to make a design and prototyping tool which anyone can contribute to could just keep free for the years to come so anyone juniors or experienced designers teams could just get it and use it as they please basically and as you can see you can immediately sign up for free you can do some prototyping elements library you have animation steam collaborations interactive prototypes screen recordings a b tests qr codes so there is some sort of new bits which you don't really see in many tools some analytics which something which attracted my eye and why i kept this tool on my radar to then dig deeper and understand if it's actually any good so that it allows you to quantify the user experience which is super important the more you dig deep into UX design so it's you know it's not just pixel pushing it's actual results as well and so we just landed and as you can see immediately they're asking us to create a new prototype it's iPhone X create an empty screen or import screens you just add basically and then there's some property pane some other bits I can add widgets looks pretty good from a wireframing perspective, you are good to get started at least from the very, very simple atoms, molecules, and organisms. Then I guess creating all the different text, rectangles, hotspots, logic. Presumably, if I would just copy the two artboards, this is an A, this is a B, create a link, and I guess then it would split the traffic. And as you can see, one thing what I didn't notice before is that it allows you to capture the variables. So you have a name variable, let's say, and you can create another variable. And this is where the flow is getting split. So or basically saying if it's bank transfer, if it's checked, take it to bank transfer. If it's checked for credit card, take it to credit card i can see that there is web service as well so i guess you can add some sort of apis so rest api which is cool for like development fellas and like ux engineers and front-end developers as someone who's kind of like fiddling in both realms and then add comments so i guess some collaboration tools as well that's pretty cool so far let me try to import some stuff i guess uh, this is a flat image but let's try importing figma let's say let's see what happens then access key so i guess you need to then link the two as a like almost like a developer app which might be inconvenient for some but it's quite common for plugins and so really quickly i just got my figma key you can follow the instructions to get yours and i'm just going to use this mock-up which i used in another video by designer chidinma let's see if that imports and as you can see what it did it just imported a block and i can't really edit anything i think it just imports it like an image I guess more than just something you can make interactive yet, maybe. It's quite reminiscent of Axure in a way because you can do quite a lot of it. So let's say I just added two tabs, right? And I can add an action to it. Like for example, navigate back, animation, link to our screen. So you have those conditional bits as well as the action bits basically in a control pane. And if I would just click, let's say animation, it could just animate to a different state. But ultimately another bit what I notice is animations. Quite simplistic way to animate different bits. You can select exactly how do you want to animate different bits. And then I preview, boom. As you can see, you can do a lot with a kind of like keyframe simplified animations. And of course you have this export code. You select the artboard, basically it gives you view, low code, CSS and HTML. So if you are also developing or tinkering around, you can just simply copy this code and you are gonna arrive at the same conclusion. Besides my mess of what I'm trying out to do here, let's try to see exactly what examples the actual tool can produce. For example, this one, Schumann version two. You can run a test you can share it 
as a test, as a comment, as a code generation, interesting. You can also see how it tested. So we have some dummy data and some tests and you can see exactly what people did, the duration, how many screens visited, events, date, and you can also see the action of what we did. So it records literally of what people doing on a screen. And then you can mark if it was okay, if it, you want to ignore. It kind of automates a little bit for you if you want to kind of like automate the test. And let's see what's the dashboard like. So test duration, 2100 seconds, users, test coverage, way too good, I guess. You can download, download the summary, download the survey answer. So I guess in the tasks, you actually can define what sort of task you want to give. Let's preview exactly what the heat maps look like in this case. So I can see all clicks first click and you can see mouse heat map. You can see the user journey of where they went. So majority of people went from there to that button which is basically that shopping cart, I guess. Dwell time, which is quite interesting. I guess how much time did they spend on which screen? And if I preview something else, like let's see this one maybe, which I saw on their landing page, but let's just see if I run the test, if I start as a prototype and I'm meant to, let's say go, that animates the keyframes, that's pretty cool. I can see the data, I can see different bits here. And, and that's, I guess, about it. So it's a simple prototype, which then is accessible as well with a QR code to check on a mobile device, which let me see if it actually works. I don't know if you can see it, but it loaded immediately and it's exactly the same steps and the same prototype, just like on the screen. So that's pretty damn cool, if you ask me. And the heat maps, ooh, something interesting. So let's see, and what sort of analytics can we get from it? This is a click heat map, mouse heat map, user journeys. This is the most interesting for me, for example. So it combines all the different people's data and behaviors, what we did on that page. You can actually preview on a video as well whilst you are there. So that's really cool. So it's contextual. You can actually see what we did and, and how much time it took them, but also it just then summarizes the key touch points. So you land on the page. Naturally, people click on that most and then they click on one of those bad boys. And if let's say you see that some participants you don't want to include, you can kind of deselect the guess and that should affect their projections too. You can also select what color you want. So let's say if you want to represent this to your stakeholders and say, hey, we just prototype this stuff. Look at what the actual user testing is showing. This feature is really why I like this tool because there is just so much potential if you can actually do it end to end and use it fully. And this is my honest opinion. Of course, this tool is based in a browser basically. So I guess, you know, it works on the same principle as Figma does. And there's a lot of probably permeations, but I'm truly impressed with all the different properties and all the different almost like a hidden features, which I wouldn't expect, like variables, let's say, like, you know, input features fields you can edit, validation, you know, required fields, errors and things of that nature, which you can put in as well as generate code. There's just so much. Everybody tries to make money in the niche instead of giving it back to a community. And I'm super happy that there are tools like this, which focus on delivering value first, instead of jumping into freemium models, but then doing subscriptions and becoming Adobe's of the world who are simply greedy. And so that's really, really cool. Make sure to check it out support these guys because it's important to support people who care about design community, open source development. And on that note, you can find more about this at quant-ux.com. It's totally free. If you like this video, give a like, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below. And as per usual, I'll see you next time.